My name is Michael Jäger and I would like to talk to you a little bit about Phosology and SW360, two open source tools in the area of license compliance. We have the motto open source license compliance by open source software, so both software projects are actually open source projects. Let's start with Phosology first. Phosology is a tool which finds license statements. This sounds actually very trivial, but it actually means a lot. If you have an upload where no license statements are contained, Phosology will not find anything. So you need to make sure that this package which you analyze with Phosology actually contains license statements. Also, it doesn't look for source code. If you have source code only, Phosology will not find anything. If you look for source code, the sense is to look on the origin of the found source code and you need to have a database of already published source code. Phosology doesn't have that. It just scans for licensing statements in order to analyze the package situation. Why would you need to look for license statement in the package anyway? Because many open source projects declare their licensing on their homepage. Actually, if you look inside packages, for example, Apache Thrift and you use Phosology, you will find many different licensing. And that's natural because open source software is comprised of other open source software or open source software is comprised of contributions by different parties and maybe they have used different licensing. Also, if you look, for example, at the very famous open source project, the Linux kernel project, you will find, depending on how you count it, up to 30 distinctive licensing, licensing statements. Phosology is, in fact, a quite old project. It was published by Hewlett Packard in the year 2008 and it was licensed under the GPL 2.0 from that on. Today, it's still available under the GPL 2.0. At the time when Hilo Packard was publishing it, they were scanning their Linux disk pros they have used for their printers, scanners, and so on. And they found that it would make sense, actually, to store already scanned files, because from distro to distro, for product to product, actually only a fraction of the files was different. So you could save time and efforts when you, when you store files where you have already scanned the licensing inside. So they came up with the server software, which was usable by different persons working on different products and published it as an open source project. In 2015, the project has been transferred to the Linux Foundation. And since then, it's a Linux Foundation collaborative project. Today, Phosology is a server software, which allows for multiple users analyzing files in a multi-tenant way. The working with Phosology is quite simple. First, you upload a package. Agents of the Phosology server software will unpack the, phos the uploaded package, look by different criteria, for example, licensing statement, copyright statements, maybe also trade compliance. When the scanning has been completed, then the user can review the findings and actually sort out false positives. And if that review check has been, has been finished, then you can generate reporting for example, a word-based report, text files, or reports in the SPDX format. There are a lot of licenses, licensing scanner out there, but the main point with Phosology is it's specialized for review. And after some years of reviewing open source licensing and uploads, it was found that a hierarchical view aggregating license findings is actually very important to sort out and quickly navigate to important licensing. Also, Phosology is optimized for looking into licensing found in individual files with powerful highlighting of license relevant statements and also keywords and showing at the same time um, which licensing is actually referring to which found keyword or text phrase. And if you look at how Phosology works, you will find out that it is much about conclusions. It's about that you scan a file that you review what the scanner has been found, and then you conclude the licensing for a file. What sounds cumbersome is actually also the thinking of the SPDX standards, because also the SPDX standard distinguishes between licensing, which has been identified in a file, and the conclusion an expert was actually deriving from the findings. It depends on the domain how much a conclusion is actually different from what the scanner has identified. Depending on the domain, it can be up to 30% of the identified license statements where an expert has concluded a more precise um, definition of licensing, has concluded maybe a different license, and so on and so on. And of course, with Phosology, you can still automate if you wish to prefer or maybe pre-check 
the font licensing without having an expert looking at individual files. You have the REST API, but you have also another project, which is called FOSS Driver, which is a Python library to remote control your Fossology. And you have command line tools that are available after you have installed Fossology. The REST API, by the way, is very easy to use. In the UI, where you actually administer the settings of a user, every user can go into this part of the UI and generate a token. And this token can be used to authenticate against the REST API. The REST API usage is also very straightforward. First, you prepare maybe. Um, you can create folders. You can look at what's inside of the folders. You can try to find your folder that you would like to use. Then you schedule scan jobs, depending on your choice, only for licensing, for licensing and copyright statements, and so on. Then you observe how long actually the scan job take. It's a long running thing, so it's not really that you have a request and then you get the response back. And after the scan jobs have been finished, you can download different reportings. There are more Fossology projects. For example, you have Atarashi, which is a novel license scanner only. It's not really a UI project, it's a command line scanner. And we would like to build a new scanner module with Atarashi, which is based on information retrieval metrics. The old way of finding licenses is by text comparison or maybe using regular expressions or keywords. But we found that also a new technology can be helpful, which was derived from information retrieval, working on text statistics. Another open source project is about Fossology Slides. So Fossology Slides is a one day course which has been published to the public on GitHub, where every party can actually take the slides and give their own trainings about Fossology. And another project that you will find in the Fossology group on GitHub is Fossology ML, which is just an experiment how useful machine learning would be for license identification. If you like Fossology, check out Fossology.org or check out the GitHub pages, and maybe you would like to also start this project. If you like Fossology even more and maybe use it, consider also to put your organization logo on the Fossology homepage because it helps to um, actually support the credibility of Fossology, which is very important for a licensed scan tool. So far for Fossology, um, I hope you have questions. Feel free to contact me. And now I would like to switch over to SW360. SW360, an open source component hub, came from the idea that in a larger organization, you have multiple systems which deal actually with software components. You maybe have license scanners, you have an artifact repository, maybe you have already some project bill of material management, maybe you do some code quality checking, maybe you do source code scanning. All these different software or servers or applications are actually dealing with software components. And in an organization, you would like to integrate these different systems. And when you integrate them, you're writing adapters. And the likely problem that's actually happening is that mapping of software component naming will be, will be necessary. So mapping of software component naming comes from the fact that different systems are actually using different ways of naming components. Some use maybe packaging URLs, some use vendor component version, some are calling vendors differently, some are calling components differently. So there can be very individual ways of how to express a component name. And for every connection between two systems, you might come up with an individual mapping, which is bad because it, it may cause a lot of effort. The basic idea of software SW360 is for large organization to serve as a component catalog, as we say, a phone book for components, where all software components which are in the organization um, and are referenced by different other systems can be centrally stored as a hub. And mapping can be done centrally there, and you don't have these, um, this need to build mappings between each individual system, between individual systems. And that's actually also very important because Software 360 is not a component catalog of the most popular components or the uh, most important 10,000 components and so on. It's rather a catalog of components which are in use in your organization. That's a different thing. Other, other solutions can do this catalog of the most important 10,000 components better than SW360. SW360 is truly for the components that are in use inside your organization. 
And when you have a catalog of components, it's very natural that you get to the next step. Imagine that you have different projects or products in your organization. You would like actually to create bill of materials for, for your products or projects. And from the component catalogs, you can actually map usage to your products and projects. So you can manage the bill of materials for them. And that actually enables a lot of other use cases. For example, not only for open source licensing to create license documentation for a product, but also you could track vulnerabilities. You could maybe care for trade compliance. You could maybe find out about the use of commercial software inside your products and so on and so on. That's the basic idea of SW360. It focuses on the component, on the components which are inside, inside your organization. And based on that, it maintains bill of materials for your projects and products. And with a bill of material, you can run all the use cases which you would like to have when you distribute your products. SW360 is also very open. Not only it has a REST API, but it uses the SPDX um, files for, for example, importing licensing information to generate the license documentation for a product. And by using SPDX, it's actually very independent from Forsology. If you have another license scanner or other compliance tools which generate SPDX, it's no problem for SW360 because it's just relying on the SPDX file. And um, also recently, as uh, it was added to SW360, that you can that you can also upload the bill of material of SW uh, of uh, in SPDX. And SW360 is not alone. As a companion to SW360, there is Antenna, also an Eclipse project. And SW360 Antenna is not an application that runs its uh, on its own. It's rather a collection of command line tools or modules, for example, for Maven-based build projects, which are helping you to generate the bill of material and use the REST API in SW360 to transfer the determined bill of material. At the same time, for example, in the Eclipse ecosystem, there is Steady. Steady is a new project in the Eclipse Foundation, which takes the bill of material and can maintain vulnerabilities and also even more um, can, for example, find malicious code in your software project. And if you look into the Eclipse Foundation, there is also a great framework for IP due diligence when you are in the role of publishing a new project as a project of the Eclipse Foundation. There is an office and there are processes defined which give you guidance and also support to be license compliant and deliver with your Eclipse project's license compliant software. So that was it for SW360 and before that for Sology. I hope that this introduction was a help to you and please feel free to contact me in case you have questions.